Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will further explore the data load tool or DLT Python library. DLT is an open source library that we can use to extract and load data from various sources. If you need to install and create a project, then check out the previous video. Link is in the description below. Previously, we have developed a pipeline that extract data from SQL Server to Postgres. However, our source database connection string is baked into the pipeline script. We can further enhance our pipeline and clean up the code by using the verified sources in DLT. In addition, we can leverage the built-in module from DLT to copy a table, list of tables, or the entire database with minimal code. Let's dive in and see how we can add verified sources to our project. Verified source is a Python module that allows creating pipelines that extract data from a particular source. We can view the list of sources with the following command, dlt init dash dash list dash verified dash sources. This lists a comprehensive list of sources. You can pick a particular source for your needs. We will go ahead and select the SQL database source. This source loads tables from any SQL Alchemy supported database and it supports batch request as well as incremental loads. We can add the SQL database source with the following command, dlt init SQL underscore database and then the target database, which is Postgres. We will enter Y to continue and Y again to clone and configure the verified source for SQL database. This will add a new folder called SQL database. This directory has various modules that help us extract data from a supported database. The main functionality is in the init file. Let's open this file and review a few of the main functions. This utilizes the helper functions and we have a SQL database function that is distinguished as a source with a DLT source decorator. This function helps load data from a SQL database using SQL Alchemy. Following this, we have the SQL table function. This helps load data from a SQL database table. The source decorator helps establish a connection to underlying database using the connection details defined in the secrets file. So let's open up the secrets file and define the source SQL database connection. This is the normal convention for the source credentials. However, SQL Server needs an additional driver parameter that does not work well with this syntax, or at least for me. Therefore, we build the source connection string with this additional parameter. This is our source database connection string, and the decorator will push this to the SQL data pipeline. The SQL database pipeline utilizes the functions in the SQL database module. With the help of this pipeline, we can load a list of tables from a database, or we can load the entire database from one server to another. And last but not the least, load a single table. We also have the option to select particular columns. By default, this pipeline is loading the entire database. For now, we'll go ahead and run with the default and load the entire database. Currently, this sample pipeline has the credentials baked into it, and it is pointing to MySQL database with some sample tables. We'll go ahead and update it so it pulls data from SQL Server. We will extract data from SQL Server's AdventureWorks database. So I'll replace this code with some updates that I've made for SQL Server. I'll paste in the code and let's quickly review it. So in the first function, select tables from the database, we have removed the connection string. The pipeline is updated to store data in the SQL data schema in Postgres. We have provided a list of tables from AdventureWorks. DLT also offers an incremental load option. We'll cover this in a future video. Let's look at the load entire database function. This also looks much cleaner. The source connection is gone. The end result of this function is saved in the SQL data schema in Postgres. We call the SQL database function and pass it to the pipeline. Practically with four lines of code, we load the entire database. This is amazing. At the end of the script, we call the load entire database function. So this is the SQL database pipeline. Let's go ahead and save our changes. Just to give you a preview, 
This is our source database in SQL Server called AdventureWorks. We will load the entire database to our destination server, Postgres. And the table will be under a new schema called SQL underscore data. Let's go ahead and run the pipeline. Okay, we ran into an issue. It is complaining about the secrets and not being able to locate the source credentials. We have updated the source file and removed all the other sources except SQL Server. We only have the source, SQL Server, and the destination Postgres details here. So I'll save it and we'll go ahead and give it a try again. Okay, this time around the pipeline is running. We should see a new SQL data schema in our target database. This might take a little time depending on the size of the data and resources available. Make sure you have enough resources available to process the entire database. Okay, our SQL database pipeline completed successfully. It has loaded data to the Postgres schema called SQL underscore data. We see the new schema in the target database. This schema has 38 tables. We can check the number of tables against the source and confirm it. Let's go ahead and query a table to make sure it contains data. We run a select statement against the customer table and it returns about 18,000 rows, which I know is correct. We see the data populated in this table. So we have successfully loaded an entire database from SQL Server to Postgres with a few lines of code. This is an amazing feature of DLT. The supported sources or verified sources get first class treatment and we can leverage the predefined modules to write clean and simplified data pipelines. We can inspect the DLT audit tables to get more information about our SQL pipeline. So this is how we can utilize the verified sources in DLT to build clean and concise data pipelines. If we need to import a single table or list of tables, then we can switch the function call. We can either enable the standalone table or select the list of tables. We can provide the desired table and the schema. We will explore this in the next session along with the incremental load approach. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.